G'day everyone, welcome back to the vlog. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. G'day everyone, welcome back to the vlog. It is currently about 1.30 p.m. here in Melbourne on a Sunday afternoon, and I've already wrapped up two poker sessions today. Ended up getting in seven hours and six minutes of play for a grand total of 1,685 hands, which of course does put me well over the 1,500 hand goal I typically have on any given day. So obviously pretty stoked with that. As I told you guys in my last vlog that I was moving places and there was going to be a bit of a gap in between those next two vlogs and honestly I was just going to wait until I had my brand new computer set up. It's coming in the mail right now, still waiting a few days before we have that set up going but then I'll be able to screen record and hopefully that will improve the quality of these things. But in the meantime, so many of you guys hit me up on social media asking me when's the next vlog coming out, where are the daily vlogs going, we really want another one and I've got to say thank you to you guys because you definitely have inspired me to put one out in the meantime, whilst well, we're waiting for that new computer setup to come. So I've definitely got a very, very interesting hand history that I played in today's session just to thank you guys for all the support whilst I'm going through this move. So let's get into it. The following hand history is from a very, very deep 1-2 online 6 max cash game. And I think the fact that both the opponent and myself, the hand we play, starts with over 1,000 effective in a 1-2 game definitely contributes to not only a lot of the decisions and strategies used across the hand, but also how ridiculously large the pot does end up getting. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The action folds to a very less aggressive cutoff and they just go ahead and cold open it to 13. Then the action falls to me in the small blind and I have pocket queens. Now, usually the very obvious move to go ahead and three bet, particularly out of the small blind where I don't like cold calling anyway. However, given these specific circumstances where we are super, super deep with villain, like I said, we're both over a thousand effective. And the fact that my opponent did just cold open so large, this is something you typically see more in a live poker setting where someone will sort of just sit around folding forever and then they suddenly get dealt pocket aces and then they raise to like 50 in a 2-5 game, for example. That can actually be a bit of a sizing tell and make it pretty obvious that they do have aces. So I do think I should consider just a flatting here. It's not something I would typically ever recommend with pocket queens in the small blind, really any hand in the small blind, but given my opponent's potentially obvious sizing tell, I definitely should at least consider it in this spot. Having said that though, I don't like doing it against this opponent in particular, just because this opponent hadn't been folding everything and then suddenly they raise really large. They've been betting every hand, raising every hand and playing very aggressive. So I just can't blindly assume that they do have aces when they do this. So I definitely want to go ahead and three bet for value because even if the large and sizing tell is indicative of a stronger hand, pocket queens is so strong. We actually beat some of those stronger hands like pocket jacks, like ace jack suited, for example, as stuff we can get value from with a three bet. So I go ahead and make it 45. And I will say about this three bet sizing, I think this is far too small and it's actually the biggest mistake sake I make in the hand. I think I should be raising it up something that's closer to around 60 just because we are out of position and super deep with villain. We can definitely get more value by raising larger. I make the mistake though and make it 45 when the action gets back to the cutoff. They go ahead and four bet it to 139. So the action's back on me with queens here and I'll be honest this is actually kind of a gross spot. Something I say a lot in this vlog but I actually consider doing all three options here. I think they all do have some merit. The reasons I would potentially consider folding are if my opponent is playing a tighter four bet strategy namely that they are only doing it with aces or kings then obviously we can just totally get away with folding queens here. This is way too much to call off especially out of position against a range that strong. So if my opponent was tighter, I definitely would consider folding here, but this isn't that the opponent type, as I'm sure you guys will be clued onto by now. They're definitely a loose aggressive opponent, so I take folding off the table because I think their range is wider and definitely does include bluffs. The next potential option I consider is going ahead and five betting queens, looking to get it all in pre-flop. I think five betting has a lot of advantages to it. If my opponent is four bet bluffing with hand like ace five suited, ace jack, something like that, 
If we five bet now, they're very likely to fold those hands and then we don't need to worry about seeing an ace on the flop, a king on the flop. Even if they have jacks or something, then we don't have to worry about them hitting a set. So we can just win the pot now, which is great when my opponent did four bet so large. So I definitely should consider five betting. The only reason I don't go ahead and five bet here is because over five and a half buy-ins is just way too much to get in. Preflop with queens, I think every time you do get in with queens for that much, it's going to be against aces and kings, like maybe not even kings. So I really don't like that option. So that lands me on calling. Calling is what I end up going with. I think it is the best decision, but it's not really a great decision. It's just sort of the worst of the three evils. There are some drawbacks. Like I think we're very likely to be bluffed off if it's like an ace high board. We do potentially let our opponent get there with some hands post flop and they end up getting better value from us or bluffing us off. So there definitely are drawbacks to calling, but considering all three options, it's the best one in my opinion. So I do go ahead and throw in the call. And then we are heads up to a flop and it is a banger. It is queen six three with two spades. So obviously running good today, flopping top set in this four bet pot. Having said that, I definitely still wanna go ahead and check it over to my opponent. Don't want to lead in this spot if my opponent does have a bluff like ace king or one of those you know 10 nine suited something like that pre-flop they're probably going to go ahead and bet on this board to try and scare me off my one pair hands and even if they do have aces or kings i think at least the progressive opponent is going to go ahead and bet those hands anyway so going to check it over to them to induce a bet then they go ahead and make it 97 and a half the action's back on me here, and I do think we have somewhat of an interesting decision here. I could potentially check rates for value. If my opponent does have aces or kings, I think they're very likely to call and continue to a bet. Plus, if they have a flush draw, this is probably going to be the best street we can try and get all in on without them improving to an actual flush. So I definitely do consider check raising. Having said that, though, I do much prefer calling just because if my opponent does have one of those looser bluffs, like an ace-king offsuit, for example, I think we can potentially induce further action by just calling here and then they can either bluff on a turn, which gives them equity, like a jack or a 10, or they can actually turn top hair themselves on an ace or a king and we definitely want to let them improve. So I do go ahead and just throw in the call and we are still heads up to the turn. And the turn is the jack of diamonds putting out backdoor diamonds. I go ahead and check it over to the cutoff, just sticking with my plan from the previous street. And then they keep betting at it. They go ahead and make it 162 and a half. Obviously loving that news with their top set here, but now we do have another interesting decision and it's the same decision I had on the previous street, whether to check raise or just call. And like I said on the flop, I like check raising here to try and stack my opponent if they do have aces or kings, probably because the check raise here would have to be an all in. The other reason I really like check raising here, if my opponent does have one of those really strong flush draws, remember there's two of them out there now, it's just more combinations of hands that are worse than ours, they're probably gonna call off to a shove. There's some potential they would fold. I'm not so confident that this specific opponent actually would. So it's a good opportunity to get value from those hands as well before they do suck out on us. The reasons I would like calling here are just to keep my opponent's bluffs in. If they do have ace-king off suit or, you know, 10-9 suited is now an open-ended straight draw, we can potentially call now to try and induce bluffs from those hands on the river. Additionally, I think it is somewhat possible a loose aggressive opponent will just go four bet, 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 bet with a hand like pocket aces. Although against tighter opponents, I think a lot of them will shut down with a check, even with those stronger open pairs on the river, considering the pot's so big. So... I think there is some merit to calling to induce further bets. I don't decide to do that though. I decide to try and get max value from those over pairs and those flush draws. So I go ahead and rip it all in for about 900 and then my opponent snap calls. So obviously we're loving that news, but we're loving it even more when my opponent turns over jack three of clubs. So obviously they lost their mind pre-flop and four better hand that week, but then somehow they turn two pair on this board get it all in against us, and they're still drawing dead. The river's the nine of clubs, but they were drawing dead on the turn, and we scoop in probably the biggest pot I've ever played in a one two six max online cash game, and obviously love and life when that happens. So, like I said, one of the biggest pots I've ever played on the online poker vlogs. Hop in the comments below and let me know how you will play the hand, because even though it was a massive pot, I still think there are multiple interesting decision points across all of these streets, but all of them sort of just boil down to, would you rather go ahead and just call or raise it up to build a pot? Obviously those are all decisions, but pre-flop, on the flop and on the turn. So hop in the comments below, let me know what you would do. 
that's going to wrap up the vlog for today. Thank you so much for watching as always. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We're going to get vlogs coming out to you soon. Obviously, my consistency has been slacking since the move. And I might put out a few more of these like shorter form ones before I do get my setup with the screen recording. But once that's all set up, we're definitely going to go back to very, very regular daily vlogs. So for now, I'm out of here. Peace.